I'm going to limit all testimony to three minutes. If you would like to forego, you've already signed up, your testimony and provide it to another individual to testify for six minutes, absolutely fine. But just keep that in mind that uh, Mr. Bojan will be, be timing us and please be considerate and also if you uh, will keep your remarks to the bill. I have been to a lot of dispensaries and the problem that I have with it is that a lot of these dispensaries aren't even handicapped accessible. Senator Foster. Thank you, Madam Chair. So there is an issue with, you know, the community that said this is how they wanted it when they voted for it. Sometimes we vote for things and there's unintended consequences to that vote. The title of the book I'm putting in, It's Just a Plant, A Children's Story About Marijuana. Who are you recruiting when you have that book for sale? Thank you. I'm sorry. This is not an interactive conference hearing. So please, please keep the noise down. Thank you. Senator Hodge. Thank you, Madam Chair. As far out of the box as we've gotten, we've got, what, 60,000 or whatever in the works licenses. How do we put it back in the box without a dispensary model? Senator Hodge, continue. Thank you. But I guess my question really is, have any of the other states gotten this far ahead of themselves and then tried to rein it back down? How, has that worked anywhere? Mr. May. Mr. Martinez. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Senator, I'd like to add just a few things. In California, we don't want to model anything that they've done. Simply because they established a dispensary model early, a de facto wise, and they've been trying to get that genie back in the bottles from their inception in 1996. The way to get the genie back in the bottle as much as we can is to keep Amendment 20's intent the way it is and take that piece of dispensary or clinic model out of this amendment. Um, I, I do ask, because you know, I do think this bill does bring it out of the shadows, and I've been clear that it's not perfection, but it's good. Um, I am really asking your fundamental thoughts. Is it your contention that we can just continue in this kind of unclear world that we're in solely just based upon what you believe is in the Constitution? Senator Foster. A couple, a couple of things. So my question that I've been asking law enforcement is how do you put the toothpaste back in the tube? back to 2002, 2003, up to 2007 and try to put the toothpaste back in the tube. I don't know how you do that, you know. I, so that answer back to regulation doesn't, doesn't work for me. I, I, so I don't understand it. Uh, additional questions for the witness at this time, Senator Foster? You know, quite frankly, some of you in the audience with your hand gestures is really annoying. And I am really a very nice person here, and I have a lot of patience, and I respect what you've all come to, and you're trying to do. Okay, I really do, because there are people that need this medicine. There are people that need, and I am trying to be very respectful, and I'm trying to make it work. So that said, um, the local communities want guidance because we're going to do something. We're going to do something. And we want to, we, my, from my perspective, and I'm sure the majority of this um, committee, we want to do something that works for everybody, works for the patient, quite frankly. Works for the patient. That's my goal. This is medical marijuana. Works for the patient. I guess it wasn't a question. It was no. just a, a little comment. Just, simply by a matter of attrition, and nobody could tell the future, of course, but we truly assume, uh, and I think rightfully so, based on all the data and lessons learned from California and other states, that that will have a huge uh, declination of numbers um, and a, a huge departure from where it's at now, simply because of the way we would get that genie back in the bottle. Senator Newell. Um, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Chief Schultz. The, uh, I so respect my own local chief and wanted to ask you if, if we don't go the dispensary route, how do you get back to where we were? Senator Foster. Thank you. Chief, that's what we have in this bill. The regulation of, of places and um, the registry and, but that's, that's what I've read so far in the bill. Please do not allow a town to deny a patient's access 
to medicine because of council members' personal prejudices. Coloradans voted for compassion and care. Our veterans need this service. Please allow me to serve them. My name is Robert Chase. I represent the Colorado Coalition for Patients and Caregivers. I'm an advocate for patients whose doctors have recommended their use of medicinal cannabis and for the ending of pro the prohibition of cannabis in general. I would just like to say that I, I consider all of you, and especially Senator Romer, to be enemies of sick people in this state and enemies of the interests of, of all the citizens of Colorado. And it, you, you have been a rude, it is a rude awakening as we try to introduce people into the political process to let them see the conduct of the General Assembly with regard to this issue. You should be ashamed of your votes on Senate Bill 109, and this bill is unconscionable too. Thank you. I, I hope that you have some questions. I'm well informed about the law and the missteps and the misadministration. You know, Dr. K Dr. K Mr. Collage, the CDPHE has failed to certify. Four petitions have been made to certify new conditions. They are not required to hold a public hearing. Uh, M Chairwoman Levy uh, was, seemed to be unaware of the entire process. And, Dr. Collage has failed to administer the program in an appropriate way. He is guilty of malfeasance. He, the Colorado Department of Public Health and, and Environment and Dr. Collage have been told by the district court that they have violated the law. You choose that moment to repose complete trust in them to determine whether or not a doctor should be referred to the State Board of Medical Examiners. And you violate the, conf the doctor's confidentiality with regard to the, the patient register. You are not, you, you're not taking patient information and giving it to the State Board of Medical Examiners, but clearly that's the entire point of uh, abstracting doctor information. You need so, to ask Mr. me some Chase, questions. Mr. Chase, I certainly appreciate and uh, you're, you're certainly entitled to your opinions and, and your I await your questions. And your time is up. Uh, Senator Foster. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Chase, I really resent the fact that I, I appreciate the fact that you're very passionate about what you do, and I applaud you for being so passionate. I resent, however, the ad ad admonition that you just placed on the entire General Assembly of the state of Colorado. I personally take that as... Two legislators voted against Senate hey, Bill 109. Excuse me. Mr. It is my turn, is no Mr. Chase. It is my turn, okay? Mr. Chase, I'm, I'm really sorry. This is a civil discourse, and we can, we can choose to disagree, and no one's yelling at you, and there's no reason you're yelling at anyone else. People have are entitled. We are going to sit here as long as it takes to give people three minutes to provide their input. I apologize, but I do point out that two legislators out of the General Assembly voted against Senate Bill 109. They are the majority leader of the House, Representative Weissman and uh, Representative Mitchell. And the rest of you have a lot of explaining to do, and there really is no sufficient explanation or justification. Thank you. For my, that my questions, my comments are finished because you have, unfortunately, you want us to listen to you and respect you. I want you to but ask me are, relevant no, questions I, I don't, to I inform don't yourselves any, because you are so Mr. obviously okay. ignorant. Mr. All right, Mr. thank Chase, you. You'll, you'll be seated. On behalf of the time that was yielded to me from David Cirillo, he had asked me to say that he is a constitutionalist and would like to remind the Colorado General Assembly that his constitution and the people's constitution here is under attack. This is about freedom and liberation and our constitutional right. And where does the issue come in about 21-year-olds? These are amendments that are put in here to distract us from the other over-regulated, unparalleled uh, amendments that we do not really want. And Senator Romer's idea of patronizing us with these other ideals that we want, but nobody's listening to us. And that includes all of you and the other two uh, General uh, Assembly members who voted for relegalization in sort of a, another words, excuse me. So all I have to say is that you guys, I'm going to join Robert Chase on shame on the rest of the General Assembly minus the two. And so hopefully you folks can, you know, learn a little bit and perhaps maybe by experimenting. Relieve that stigma. Don't be afraid of it. I'll, I'll, I'll smoke with you guys somewhere or eat with you guys anywhere. And thank you for your comments, Mr. Lopez. I, now that, there's no need. There's no need. 